Hi, Maria Prisma, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Ambrose, St. Ambrose, one of the great, uh, four great Western doctors of the church. His dad was a, a very important official in the Roman Empire. Uh, his dad ruled like vast areas of Gaul and other parts of the empire. St. Ambrose then, uh, as, as a, uh, uh, when he reached adulthood, ended up become, becoming appointed the prefect of what's all now the north of Italy. And in Milan, the bishop who had been, in, had been there for 20 years was an Arian and he died. And there was a tumult arising because they were going to, in those days, they, they elected the bishop, the clergy and the people elected the bishop, and the Catholics were fighting with the Arians because obviously the Arians want a, a heretic for a bishop and the Catholics want a Catholic for a bishop. And so St. Ambrose, he's a ruler, he went there to calm things down. At the time he was a catechumen. So he went into the basilica where everybody's carrying on and all that and just spoke to them quietly about you know, about being quiet and, and about the importance of, of, of doing the right thing and so forth. And all of a sudden, one of these boys, a little boy cried out, Ambrose for bishop. And then everybody started out crying Ambrose for bishop. And he's kind of bewildered because he's a, he's a catechumen. Anyway, he tried to escape the thing, but it didn't work. So over a period of time, he went through being baptized and ordained to the minor orders day by day and the major orders, priest and bishop. And it was on this day, December 7th, that he was consecrated a bishop. And an incredibly wealthy man at that point in time, he disposed of his property. I think his brother was managing part of it. He kept enough to set aside for his sister. His brother's a saint, and so was his sister. His sister had taken the veil, so he kept enough uh, set aside for her so that she'd be taken care of, and then just lived uh, a, a very modest life from that point on. He was absolutely... Uh, Fearless, at one point in time, uh, troops had surrounded, uh, they had a basilica they wanted to give to the Arians, and they surrounded the basilica, and he had the, the Catholics in there, and so he got them singing. He, and, uh, he, he had them start to sing the Psalms, which they know back and forth, which is how we now all do it now, because if, if you ever go and, 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 and see how we do it in the West, in, in a monastery or something, one, one side will sing, then the next person by the other side, back and forth. He got the people doing this, and then he taught them hymns, because he wrote hymns. That's why we have hymns in the breviary now, it's because of St. Ambrose. Another time, Theodosius is the emperor, and there was some, uh, some uprising, I don't remember, I think a city in Asia Minor, I don't remember what, the, what it was, but one of his officials had been killed by some people. So in a completely unjust act, he ordered that... Uh, that, that they wait till the people are gathered in the circus and then just slaughter about 7,000 of them, you know, with no regards to whether it's guilt or innocence or anything like that. And I believe that he actually repented of it before, before it happened, but it was too late to send messengers and you weren't going to text message, so off they went and it happened. The people are gathered there for the games and there's this horrible slaughter. Uh, well, he, 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 St. Ambrose wouldn't let him come into church. He excommunicated him. I mean, this is, this is the Roman emperor. And, uh, and the, the bishop holds him off and tells him, you do penance, you've got to repent, etc." So Theodosius is in his, in his palace there in Milan. Uh, he, I think he spent about eight months uh, weeping, not coming to mass and so forth. And finally, he sent one of his courtiers who, who t talked him into it. Like, he sent one ahead to see if he could come. And Ambrose met him there and said, you're not coming in unless you do public penance. And so Theodosius did. So this is the emperor, you know, the most powerful man in the world, putting on uh, penitential garments and, and, and saying the Psalms and kneeling there with the public penitents in front of everybody on their way in and crying and so forth. And it really moved the people. At any rate, uh, ultimately got the excommunication lifted and he could come to Mass received the Blessed Sacrament. And later in life, he'd start crying when he thought about St. Ambrose. Because he said he's the only real bishop in the world. Because he knew how much St. Ambrose loved him, that he'd resist him like that and make him do what was right to make sure he got to heaven. How we need bishops like that, priests like that. Instead of all this dancing around trying, trying to figure out how to make, give everybody a sacrilegious communion, caring enough about them to try to make sure they go to heaven and don't receive the holy mysteries unworthily. 
I'll just make one more remark about St. Ambrose because he's just a fervorino. Is of course, his greatest convert we all know is St. Augustine. St. Augustine was in Milan at that time as a Manichaean, a heretic, and a serious heretic. And St. Ambrose knew that. But St. Augustine would come and listen to his preaching, and then he'd come and visit with him. And St. Ambrose was always so charitable to him, would answer his questions and all that, that it opened St. Augustine's heart, and he brought him into the church. That's another thing we can think about as well, is our charity towards our neighbor. No matter how crazy they are at the time, we don't know what God has planned for them. Are we really showing Christ to our neighbor, or in the case of our ladies, our lady to our neighbor? Who are we showing to the people around us when we come into counter with them? Let us pray to St. Ambrose to really, really live our baptism and confirmation promises every day of our life.